Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. It's a charming romantic drama that came out on June 6, 2014. And I saw this uh, a long time ago. I loved it then, and I love it now. It's called the Fall in Our Stars. It's a story about two cancer patients who are starting to get to know each other. They fell in love until something bad happens to them while struggling harder to, to live. And this is of course the, um, the Blu-ray edition known as uh, Little Infinity's Extended Edition. So not only do you have the theatrical cut, but you also got the extended edition to join in. With all the special features joining in and and you get uh, a combo pack of both a Blu-ray, DVD, and digital copy. <laughs> yeah. and this is of course based on the best-selling novel by John Green who's been known for writing the, the novel Paper Towns which eventually followed after this um, surprisingly, this was a huge hit at the box office. It was at number one, earning for its 12 million budget and 8.5 million, doubled up to 307.2 million dollars. And as he has the performances of both Shaolin Woodley and Ainso Elgort, both of which were previously in the movie The Virgins, which became a series. I was never into that, but you get the idea. But to me, this is a better film. And yes, I did cry when I first saw this. It really got to me. Hey, it got to everyone. I mean, this is exactly what we expect. Uh, and I just really love it, the tears. I mean, it, it, it really felt real. Okay, it's really tough to do a movie about two cancer patients and they had to suffer you know before one of them either lives or dies and I guess you could say it's like a modern day take on love story in that sort of way but it's done in a whole um, different generation anyway I'm going to check on the blu-ray here um, it comes with uh, this bracelet right here yes you got like I think mean, there's like three of them here. <laughs> yeah, there's three. Even has um, all the quotes. Uh, yes, yeah, the digital code. I already used it already. And <laughs> basically the same. <laughs> the artwork of both DVD and Blu-ray. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, so I'm going to put this away. I think it's going to be alright. Uh, okay. So, really holds. And by the way, I bought this at CBS for $4.99. I couldn't find this at Dollar Tree nor Big Lots anywhere since September of last year. Yeah, I guess it got picked out by everyone or maybe my location couldn't carry it somehow. It probably did, but it just got sold out really fast. Such a shame, because I should have picked this up as soon as possible if I knew this was going to happen. I mean, it's really tough, you know, trying to find movies like this at Dollar Tree, yet alone Big Lots. But it's definitely the greatest romantic drama ever made. Well done, well written. It could also be feel good. It had humor in there, um, so they really have that. Um, now, I do wish the special features... Um, kind of went on a little longer than, than shorter because it just seems like um, they took a little time to talk about the movie and then, then it just has to go all the way. Uh, they do have deleted scenes included, um, most of which should have been included in the movie. I wish I had as a gallery. I do wish it had some music videos because I know there's songs uh, from the soundtrack, such as uh, one of the most famous one of them all, 
uh, boom clap by Charlie XCX. Um, yeah, boom, 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 clap. <laughs> Uh, that that would work well for this Blu-ray and a DVD, but it's nice to know. Okay, so let's get to the review. It stars Shaolin Woodley, Ansel Elgort, Lily Kenna, Nat Wolf, who later went on to do the movie Paper Towns that follows, Laura Dern from Jurassic Park, as well as Ramblin' Rose, you know, Wild at Heart, uh, Blue Velvet. Come to mind. Sam Tramiel from True Blood, William Defoe from Spider Man, as well as Platoon, and several other films he's been in. Lottie Burbeek from a TV show called The Borgias. I don't know if I said it right. Yeah, The Borgias. Mike uh, Birbiglia, Anna De La Cruz, Malika Govic. Uh, Carol uh, Wires and David Whalen. It's written by Scott uh, Neustadler along with Michael H. Weber. Once again, based on the novel by John Green and it's directed by Josh Boone. And just to be aware, there is going to be spoilers in the movie, so bear with me. I mean, if you haven't seen the movie, I advise you to uh, check it out before you watch this review. The movie begins where we meet a young teenager named Hazel Grace Lancaster, who's played by Charlene Woodley, who lives in Indianapolis, Pittsburgh, and with her family, who has terminal for white cancer ever since she was a little girl that actually spreads her lungs, but that's why she has to wear those breathing nozzle catheters all around everywhere she goes and she has to uh, connect it directly to an oxygen tank. Feeling very depressed, her mother Franny urges her to, to attend at a weekly cancer patient support group at a local church to help her make friends with individuals who are going through the same problem. That is until she meets Augustus Waters played by Ansel Elgort, who is a very charming teenager who actually lost a leg due to bone cancer, but he had since become cancer free. He invites Hazel to his house. I mean, granted, you know, he had trouble, uh, <laughs> you know, driving through his um, van that he got. Yeah, yeah, he was struggling. Doesn't know how to drive very well. <laughs> um, he also has a best friend who's blind uh, named. Isaac, who's played by Nat Wolf, who just uh, got broken up uh, by his girlfriend Monica. Never saw her, but you know, he's having problems of his own. Anyway, they bond with each other over their hobbies and agree to read each other's favorite books. Um, Hazel suddenly recommends uh, *An Imperial Affliction*, which is a novel about a cancer-stricken girl named Anna. That, par that parallels her from her experience. But Augustus suddenly gives Hazel a book called Counter Insurgents, yeah, which actually has <laughs> all these zombies and all this other stuff, e even, you know, wars and <laughs> everything that went for. Yeah. But they suddenly kept in touch um, through their cell phones, you know, texting. Yeah, that's where you started seeing all these pop-ups, like, like you often see in today's movies. You know, whenever they start texting, you see a lot of those pop-ups up on the screen. This one's done very well, um, just using a, uh, a bubble in, in a particular drawing. It even says the words on screen, the text. So, they, can, they continue to go on. But after Augustus had finished the book, he expresses frustration about its abrupt ending. Yeah, we all have problems with that whenever we start seeing the movies or, or read books. Like, they feel like they could have had something included that's just missing. But it ends in the middle of a sentence, so Hazel explains that the novel's uh, mysterious author by the name of Peter Van Horten, who's played by William Defoe, 
retreated to Amsterdam to follow the novel's publication, which has never been heard ever since. So that was the problem. So they're trying to find a way as weeks goes by where Augustus decided to tell Hazel to trace um, Ben Horton's assistant named Lurik, who's played by Lada Burtbeek. And but has corresponded uh, through the email, so she writes to him to find out more about the ambitious ending that's going around. But he replied that the only way willing to answer that question was to go to Amsterdam to find out. But here's the problem. They couldn't afford it for a while. And sec second of all, we had to deal with uh, Hazel's condition that was going on. Yes, because during that one particular night, um, she started to have some more breathing problems that's affecting her so bad that the doctors uh, told them that it's not right to go to Amsterdam due to that condition because it might get much worse. I mean, she might die. But as, as they struggle so hard to finally get get in touch to enter because par apparently Augustus idea was maybe to use the um, the uh, the cancer wish uh, through make through make a wish foundation hoping to use that for for the trip but she already used it already for Walt Disney World so that was a mistake but that's okay because you know she needed to have some fun so they so both Augustus and Hazel went on a picnic date and they suddenly fell in love. She he even surprises Hazel to to win tickets to go to Amsterdam, so now they finally get to go. So they both went along with her mom, Franny, just as they finally um, make it there, they had a romantic dinner. That's that's very expensive, but it was arranged by Ben Horton. OP paid. But, you know, they're just, but then that's where they begin to feel very shocked when they found out that Ben Horton is a mean spirited uh, drunk. Yeah, he's an alcoholic. You know, he doesn't want to, doesn't want to talk to everyone. But then this is where they both try to explain about what happens in, in the novel and Apparently he doesn't know. That's when she got upset about it. So then she ran off along with Augustus and Ludwig decided to rearrange by going to the uh, Anne Frank's house uh, events without uh, Van Horden invited. So, so they decided to spend time. That was pretty difficult for for Hazel because for one thing they had no elevators so that means she's had to climb all the way up you know with her oxygen tank and that's gonna f affect her pretty bad but surprisingly she she made it all the way through once she had to climb all the way up on s once she started to get up on every s once she had to climb up all these stairs around you know, looking at each and every event all the way until she had to climb all the way up to the attic where we get to see where Anne Frank uh, does her diary and this is the house where she lives with her family around so so things were going great for them even though they are struggling harder and harder because this is when Augustus suddenly spewed it out by saying that yes he's gonna he's suffering too it's starting to affect him so it needs to get some chemotherapy because the cancer is going to get much worse. So it's starting to spread all over his body now. Yeah. Also, I, I guess I forgot to mention that, yes, he does bring in a cigarette, but he doesn't smoke by lighting it up. No, he just uses it as a metaphor. <laughs> so uh, he was getting used to that. Um, it only got worse when... Um, he went to a gas station and it started to spread around and 
he actually vomited and now he was sent to the hospital. So then both um, him along with um, Hazel and his best friend um, Isaac decided to perform a, a pre-eulogy so that way you know before he dies which apparently that's going to happen and we're going to lead to this for that spoiler that they had to go for prepare to actually write um, everything in the eulogy to see how how perfect it's going to turn out but then it gotten worse because later on Augustus passed away that's when they had a funeral you know, with uh, Hazel the rest of the family relatives everyone they all all got attended even Van Horden joins in too which led to a fight but he did gave her a note that was sent and it turns out that yes it was sent by Augustus himself so he wrote all this stuff hoping that this was going to be a message that she will definitely remember because no matter what I mean you know, things will go good for the better if not for the worse um, well anyway it's a very touching romantic drama that I really love. Um, definitely worth it. I mean, it's it's very terrific, and it definitely feels so real with all these emotions. And has a great cast right there. I mean, I love the performances of Shailene Woolley and Ainsley Elgore. They definitely had terrific chemistry together, and it really shows. Um, they were definitely the right choice to play the roles too because they really they act like real people they really acted exactly what we felt and they could be heartbreaking too I mean having to struggle through uh, cancer I mean it's it's hard I mean hey you know my you know my grandmother and and my aunt uh, had cancer uh, in recent years and it's it's sad I already lost uh, my Aunt Borfa. I usually call her Auntie. And it's just, it's heartbreaking. And I felt very sad about it that she's gone. I mean, it, it's just not the same. That's exactly how, so that's how I felt about that. I mean, it sucks with this horrible disease that, that had to spread. Um. But deep down of it, though, I did cry when I saw the movie. I mean, it got to me when I when Augustus died. I was in, I was burst into tears so hard that I just couldn't stop. I, I think I also started to cry um, at some scenes too. You know, when you know they're they're struggling. It, it, it was really hard, but. On the other hand, though, I love the humor. Uh, there's actually a scene where, when Isaac uh, became blind, because due to his cancer too that he had, that's affecting his vision. Um, he just got broken up by his girlfriend uh, Monica, and there, there's a scene where, you know, he started to break something by actually taking out uh, Augustus's trophies because he's not very good at those and. Even though he won them, he decided to <laughs> have him destroy it while both him and Hazel were making a conversation <laughs> while he's just trashing stuff. I was like laughing like hell when I saw that scene. Um, uh, there, there are other moments too. I mean, he, he also, Isaac also uh, does play video games too, you know, whenever he feels stressed out. But, he, you know, even though he's, he's blind. And there's even a scene where he does, um, with the help of Hazel and Augustus, they decided to bring some eggs, you know, to throw in, into the, her car. And then uh, Monica's mother shows up, and then this is where 
Augustus had to explain about that that situation. Then she gets back into the house, and then they just continue. Uh, yeah, I, I know Augustus had trouble trying to throw the eggs, <laughs> and hoping that he did land it into the car, and it did. So even they both help out to uh, solve that problem. <laughs> Very funny moment. Um, uh, but everyone was good in the film. Well, William Defoe does give it a frankless role playing the Peter Van Horden. I mean, at, at times, you know, he acted like a complete asshole, you know, considering that he's mean-spirited and you know, he's an alcoholic. He doesn't care about anything but himself. I don't blame Hazel for being mad at him for what he did. Uh, also, Laura Dern was very good, too, uh, as uh, Franny, along with um, Sam Trammell as, as Michael, yeah, Hazel's father. So, so they're both good, and everyone else was, too. I mean, there's not a, there's not a bad performance out there. Well, except for Wynn. But Wynn the Fro was also good, too, I mean, despite of you know, playing an asshole. Um, but it has a great soundtrack, as I mentioned. Um, great music, wonderful cinematography. Um, shot very well um, through the locations of Amsterdam and e even the, um, Pittsburgh. So. But it really shows that life is hard. It becomes a metaphor for what it believes in. And I guess it shows that no matter what happens, I mean, you will always remember, you know, whenever you live or, or when, whenever you die. I know, it, it's hard to review films like this. I, it really is, because it really gets to me. And I'm just trying to come up with some words to describe. Um... But I definitely love both Augustus and Hazel, especially when they fell in love with each other. Even when they went to Amsterdam, they, you know, they had a wonderful uh, dinner at a local restaurant. Uh, they went to a hotel. They actually made love, had sex, and they explored all the way around Amsterdam. They even sat inside the bench just to explain their problems. You know, having to struggle through a horrible disease. You know, which was really funny though too, because when they did shot this movie in Amsterdam, um, I guess they were having problems trying to look for the bench because it was missing. But then they were hoping they were gonna try to find a way to re reinstall a new bench. But then, because that was all rumored, and then suddenly it turns out that. It was the same bench after all. So, I don't know. This, but th that's what I heard about uh, some information on, on the film when they did that. So it had some nice details. Um, and sometimes they, they actually used some sets to, to shot some of those scenes that didn't quite make it through um, the city. So it looked to me like they must have built some sets of of what the Anne Frank's house looked like to make it look more like a replica to what it's supposed to be. So it looked like they really did shot this on a set and not a real location. So I, I was surprised to hear about that. Wonderfully directed by Josh Boone who previously had done some movies and so he really did a a great job you know, focusing on a teen romantic drama that's very touching and very heartbreaking at times and tear jerking too so he knows what he's doing with the two writers joining in you know adapting the novel which by the way John Green did have a cameo appearance in the extended edition uh, which they actually show him with his daughter uh, there was one scene where a Hazel actually um, takes out her nozzle breathing catheter and show it to her to try it out to see how it is. <laughs> so I, I know because sometimes you know they might 
they might carry some germs in there. But hey, she had to use it. Um, there's even a deleted scene where uh, John was actually joking around, <laughs> saying that I created those characters. I thought that was really funny. Um, there's also another deleted scene where she actually went inside the um, the glass uh, tube where it brings out all these oxygen so that way she breathes while she holds her arms. It's so she can actually breathe all that oxygen that can follow once she gets inside. Because they had to take um, her oxygen tank with her catheters in that inside and so that they can move it direct, directly to it. it. Yeah, just to check around because of um, all these metals and stuff. They, they do this a lot when, whenever you go to an airplane or any place. But it was interesting. But nevertheless, I love the film. I really do. And I'll never forget it. I mean, I may be an adult already, I saw this as an adult, but hey, you know, I was a teenager once, but I'll still remember. But I highly recommend this movie. Um, just bring, but just be prepared for your Kleenex because it's really going to get to you so far. Nevertheless, <laughs> so anyway, that's the fall in our stars. And I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.